If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Yeah, tell us. For about 18 minutes, we talk about Father's Day. Mm. We talk about what our kids think we do for work. Adam's Chipotle meat. What the fuck? We talk about the time I stole pizza. Yeah. And we talk about iconic musicians, the best ones of all time, of course, right around the time we liked music. When we <laughs> <were there. laughs> I'm glad you pointed that 90s grunge. Then we get into fitness. We talk about uh, what are our views on pre-exhausting small muscle groups before big movements. For example, hitting your triceps before doing your chest with like a bench press. Questionable. Yeah, not really a good idea, or is it? You'll find out. How imperative is it to eat 30 minutes after your workout? Have you heard of the anabolic window? No. Get, get those gains. It's a real it's thing. A thing. thing. In myth land. Oh my God. Then we get into uh, what is most important when you're squatting? Getting the proper setup or getting the right cues while you're doing squat? And we talk a lot about feet. Feet, yeah. very important. My least favorite body part. And then my favorite question of all time, what's the largest animal we think we could be beat up in the octagon? If Find out a- if it's a small kitten. That's as big as Sal could tackle. I basically make the argument that a koala bear would destroy everybody. I could destroy a lizard. <laughs> in this room. Right, also, I'm confident. Also, this month we have our summer starter pack. It's everything you need to get started. This is the fitness. final week to get that deal and save over, it's like 60% off. Almost, dude. I think it's like 58% off. Yep. It includes MAPS Anabolic, our foundational program, MAPS Prime, which has a self-assessment tool called the Compass, and it helps you correct imbalances and create better recruitment patterns for your workouts. One of the best things you could do for yourself right now is to understand that concept by itself and apply it. Exactly. We also have a nutrition component there with our nutrition guide and fasting guide so you can learn how to do proper intermittent fasting. And then we include forum access in there. So you have access to our big forum with fitness uh, professionals in there, doctors. Uh, You have me, Adam, and Justin on there. Um, to help you along the way. Yeah, we're great. All packaged together, all discounted massively this month only. You find it all at mindpumpmedia.com. Hey, Justin. What's up? Um, how was your Father's Day, dude? I didn't even ask you how your Father's Day was. Dude, I know. How was your Father's Day? Well, I asked well, you first. Fine. It was good. It was cool. What'd you do? It's a lame conversation. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Adam's like, fuck you guys. <laughs> Don't do I'm it, just, Adam. I'm just kidding. Don't do it. You're going to break my heart. No, it was good. It was, uh, my wife had to work. This is like typical, dude. Every single time. Oh, I got to work. You know, sure. Nobody cares about the dad. Right? We, you get, know what I mean? we get like, you know, backseat. It's like, oh, it's Father's Day. You should barbecue. Yeah. Like fuck you, man! Oh, see, my, uh, yeah, you should barbecue. My girls' family, they're de- they they sell they, they they did a whole thing. Like the men, uh, we went over to her her brother's house, and he's got a pool, and a, the the women barbecued and did all that stuff. And the guys were just like relaxed. They all got, but she got him a, a new sixty five inch TV, and mm. uh, we they uh, Katrina bought them all the recent Sports Illustrated with the Warriors winning, and gave them movie tickets in between. And they made this whole you know the boys didn't do anything all day. That's nice. Yeah, it was a they 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 hype it up, but I do know that uh, do notice that a lot of people don't really do much for Father's yeah. Day. I got my guaranteed sex, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's your, the other time you oh, have sex God, every year. So, yeah. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Even, Day, even though it was really quick, it was great. Father's Day, but I appreciate birthday, it. <laughs> Christmas. I, you know what? My favorite part of Father's Day is my kids do this all every Father's Day. They'll wake up and they'll run to me and give me a hug. That's all I want. That's great. Me, ah, That's happy great. Father's Day. My, it was so funny because both both kids, it was cute. They they tried to like you know create their own little card for me and stuff. And uh, it's all, oh, I got to <laughs> tell you about my daughter's so, card. You know my my oldest, he's getting pretty decent at drawing, and so he drew me this cool kind of like Star Wars theme because he knows I like Star Wars. And so my youngest tried to do kind of the same thing, and it was just like a bunch of scribbles or whatever. And so he, he recruited like my wife Courtney to do it. <laughs> for it. Courtney is like horrible at drawing, dude. It was so funny. She tried to draw like Kylo Ren and um and Darth Vader. <laughs> it looked like these like Playmobil people. Like, it was like oh, but she knew it. She was like oh, you thought like, it was your little boy to, yeah. I thought it was like, like wow. I was like better. wow. Look at. I was like it's amazing. She's like I drew. It. I was like oh my god, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So my my daughter brings me. She's seven, right? So she brings me her card from school. And she's like, oh, Papa, happy Father's Day. So I open it up and 
it's got questions on it. So it's like, my dad's name is, and it's like Sal and, you know, and then the, the uh, what it, my dad, what my dad does for work. And it's like, he's a famous YouTuber, YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Yeah, she thinks I'm a famous YouTuber. Wow. And then it says, my dad's favorite thing to do, take a nap. <laughs> it says, says take it out. I'm Dude, like, they always throw some of the bus. I'm like, like, what are you, uh, right. what are you yeah. talking about? You do my fall, dad you likes do coffee. You do fall asleep a lot. Yeah. You are a bit of a napper. Bro, I, I think my dad works at the coffee shop. I think That's what my, my son thinks. <laughs> <laughs> he really works the coffee. Yeah. He's like, he's always going to get coffee. He, I think he works there. So when my son, my son did one when he was really little too. And he had I, I never thought to ask you guys that. How funny is that? That your children probably just don't really have a no full idea, understanding of what uh, what you do because no. you know they don't get to listen to the show. No, so. and it's always like, what does your dad like to do? And it's always something that you don't want them to say. Like my son, when he was little, he wrote a card like this too. Same thing, and it's like. What you know? What what is what is one of the things your dad likes to do? And he'll be like, he likes to fart and make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's amazing. That's um, like, and then when it's his mom's, like yeah, when they do it for the their go-tos. mom, she do, she does all the you know housework and she clean. Mm-hmm. She takes care of me and she loves. Yeah. And when's dad like he farts she, and takes naps? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, listen, kid, yeah, come on. You, you know see this roof over your head? You know how many yeah. times I prevented you from falling and hurting yourself? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I saved your life. Yeah. Hey, I got a crazy one that happened to me this weekend during Father. I, before we headed out, um, you know, I'm I'm on my bulk again, right? So now I'm, you know, worried about getting enough calories in every day. So we're heading to a barbecue. I'm stopping to get more food. I go into uh, Chipotle and uh, Chipotle. Chipotle, and my food gets fucking stolen. So <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. So how does that even work? Well, you okay, explain. So it's busy, right? So it's busy. Because everything's right in front of you. You're yeah, like shuffling along. Right. Yeah. Like, so if you don't yeah. know what Chipotle is like, it's like, you know, you, you wait in like a short line and you pick the foods you want in your little burrito bowl or whatever the hell you're making, right? So I am uh, I get a, get to get a steak quesadilla. So part of, you know, hey, now I'm adding calories into my diet. I can enjoy something like this every now and then. So mm. I get a steak quesadilla plus my burrito bowl and uh, plus Katrina's order. And it's, you know, it's backed up. So the, the kids are running around like a mad, mad man exchanging the food. So you see there's a lot of chaos going on here. And when you do a quesadilla there, they have to, after they prepare it all, then they have to put it on the last thing to melt the cheese and oh, brown yeah, it. It takes forever for so, some reason. So it yeah. takes longer. And I'm not the only one ordering quesadilla. So I'm like second or third in line to get his quesadilla done. So I pay, get, uh, and instead of like grabbing my food and then coming back to get, I just leave it there for them to put the quesadilla in. And then I go sit down. They're like, you know, we'll let you know, sir, when your quesadilla is ready. So I'm cool. So I'm sitting down. I'm like, you know, right away, right Instagramming and doing my fucking work shit, right? So I'm getting on there and I'm sitting there and like the line goes all the way through quite a few people. Oh, you're calling their orders out going. And then finally the girl walks up to me and she's like, are you waiting for your kid's meal? And I go, do I look like I'm waiting for a kid's meal? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she's like, no. And I go, no, I'm waiting for the two burrito yeah, bowls, the quesadilla, the, the chips and guac. And, the, and she goes, oh, um, I think somebody stole your food. And I was like, really? And and she's like, oh, well, if you're not waiting for a kid's meal, then your food's gone. Oh my <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So they were like- Did she, they make you another one? They they made me a whole order and they didn't even question like, I could have totally been like, oh, throw on an extra quesadilla there. They, they're just like, order what you had. And you know, it's all- And then she came over, she gave me all these coupons for, which I'm super stoked about. So totally oh, didn't dude. inconvenience me. I was in no hurry. Lunch. I was getting work done. I was multitasking. And now I came up on- dude. And this this is how you take a negative. And you turn wow. into a you just reminded me of something like that weasley kid. You, you, just, you just reminded me. Of I thought it I was that a, was horrible. I thought it was a pretty smart hustle by somebody. I'm like, you know what? Go to Chipotle. I'm sure right here. I'm telling people what to do here. Right? Just it, wait. You know this. <laughs> so somebody orders a quesadilla around five or six yeah. o'clock at night when it's hectic and the quesadilla line is getting backed up. <laughs> There's lots of bags there that anybody yeah. could probably walk up and it's grab. Or you just go up and you're like, see that bag over there? Like like some of the to-go orders. And you're like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's mine over yeah. there. Yeah, the, the burrito. Mine. Yeah, the burrito. Yeah. There's Picking only a few up. things you can order. Well, how many You're going to get it right. You know what I mean? It's a chicken burrito. Yeah, it's a burrito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, dude. Uh, you just reminded me of something I did that was horrible that I, I that's been, it's just eat, it's eaten away at me forever. Oh, God. Get and it, it just out. reminded me. Get it out on therapy oh, radio wow. here. All right. I'm going to make my confession. My very first job, this is horrible. This is, I think, one of the only few times I ever stole. My very first job was actually, yeah, it was. My very first job was I was a dishwasher 
at a uh, pizza place. Okay. Right? Horizon pizzeria. where you saw the infidelity in yeah, front of your face. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, hey, you know, I don't feel so bad. Thanks, <laughs> Justin. Only if yeah. you're Fuck lo- you guys. You only, cheated on your wife. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Assholes. Only if you're a longtime MP listener do so you pick up on that one. I felt really bad uh, because I feel really bad because this is something that I did a few times is I would have my girlfriend call in a, an order and it was always a medium all meat pizza and then she wouldn't, nobody would pick it up so it would be left over. <laughs> And inevitably, at the end of the night, the when they're, I they're close up, throw it away. they'd be like, "Ah, oh, Sal, someone didn't pick up a pizza. You want it?" I'd be yeah. like, "Sure, yeah. I'll take that." Weird. Pizza. I did that like three times, dude. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I stole three medium all meat pizzas. I think they were catching on That's when it was the same hustle. one. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Always yeah. during your shift. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't something. For like, some reason, someone doesn't pick their order up yeah. when on Sal's shift. Are you shift. sure they didn't, they didn't have pepperoncinis on there? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you know when Sal starts, when <laughs> he's like articulating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's supposed to be extra crispy crust. Actually, wait a second. Sure, that person ordered. Yeah, they did ask for that. Actually, now that you say that. I feel really bad about that. That was my very first job. I did a good job too. Yeah. Even if you subtract the pizzas that I took out of that. <laughs> Hell of a dishwasher. Getting, how much were you getting paid yeah. washing dishes? So, What's the least amount of money you guys made? And is per that hour? why you didn't want to do that? Legitimately, like legitimately. It can't so, be like, like your dad gave let you me think. five dollars an hour. What was the, So the, let me think, because my first actual job was working with my dad, but I don't count that. Mine right? was this four dollars and fifty cents an hour. I think that's what I was I think wow. I was making four yeah. fifty, but it was cash under the mm. table. Mm. So I got paid. I don't know. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that, huh? Sorry, I'm gonna have to pay taxes on yeah, that. IRS, <laughs> they can't go that far back. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Three, it's three, it's three right? years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I owe you like you know. I, uh, sorry, IRS. I only owe you like fifty bucks. It wasn't that much money. <laughs> but it was four fifty so an hour. Straight and narrow now. It was under the it was under the table, so he'd pay me cash, and I say and I saved up my money, and I bought myself a uh, brand new mongoose. Oh, mongoose! Oh, Remember the yeah. mongoose BMX? Of course. Are you kidding me, dude? Come on, this guy who likes rad. Like, yeah, bro. exactly. You don't like rad. Yeah. Come on. Did you have a mongoose? Yeah, I did. You yeah. had like the primo bike. I did, bro. And I could do on the mongoose. Here's here's the extent of my trickery. The, the, you know, a wheelie with a bar you, a bar could spin. You front hop. Uh, just a bunny hop. That's oh. about it. <laughs> I can wow. do. It. I could make it up a curb. Impressive. <laughs> I can make it up a curb sometimes. Sometimes I'd fall. Yeah. <laughs> but that actually that skill came in handy one day when I was running away from a bunch of. Big dudes that want to beat me up. I, j- I bunny hopped on a bunch Are you of sure curves. The, the karate kid, it was about you, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was Danny LaRusso. Yeah. Oh, I got one for you. Did you know this? I feel like an idiot that I didn't know this. Hmm. Uh, the movie Iron Man, do you know who that is based off of? Iron Man? Yes. Like the entire comic book series? No, well, no like the, the movie who they who they use to base the character, oh. Tony Stark, who Tony Stark is based on. Elon after. Musk? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I did wow. not fucking know that. Yeah. Well, okay. I, so, Iron, Interesting. so Iron Man, I, this, they, they actually based it off Elon? Yes. The movie? Yes. That's stupid. Well, you know, not, you know the, why well, it's stupid? Not, well, not the, like the, the character Tony Stark. So, look but at Elon is not like that. Elon's a yeah, nerd. He's not an asshole. Well, all over in Tesla, I guess, is they have all kinds of... So I know that they call him that because he's this super smart, like billionaire guy, but he's not like Tony Stark. He's not like this, you know, like dude that gets all the chicks and he's like, he's kind of a nerd. Like yeah. well, Elon's kind of a- So we think. He's a super smart- I, <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I'd hit it. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. Elon is my freaking- he, He's He's my hero. Ass. He's yeah. a badass, yeah, but he's, he's not- so he's like, I was I'm flying everybody. To I Mars was being enlightened by an chicks. employee there, yeah, just this past weekend, mm-hmm. and I did. I didn't know that. I never. I've never heard that. Fact, well, oh, here's a here's another little piece of trivia. Do you know who they based the character? Uh, uh, what's his name? Johnny Depp's character in Pirates of the Caribbean. No. Who yeah, he based yeah, yeah. That character it off was of? a Keith Richards. Yeah, yeah. And then they ended up having him in like the third or fourth. Movie. Yeah, because yeah. when they told him that he was going to be the, the the you know the main dude in Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. he was trying to dream up of what he would act like, yeah. and so he he, he just mimicked gave, like, Keith dreadlocks. Richards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keith was, Richards. Yeah. All just, yeah. And if yeah, you like, watch all, it, you're kind of like, oh fuck, heroiny. Yeah. yeah, he's got the exactly, and he's got the dark uh, eyeliner and shit. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Now I got to go back and look at some old Keith Richards stuff. It was brilliant. Yeah, they don't just created that character. They don't make musicians iconic like. They used to. I'm just, mm. yeah. They just don't. Yeah. Like Slash. Like like Slash is a flea. 
Who like, could who, yeah. find me who another slash? That look. Yeah, you know come I mean, on, man. Big old curly fro. And I don't know, dude. Top I think, hat. I, you don't I, see cool. That is a crazy combo. You don't see cool instrument players anymore that no. have the well, wrong thing. Well, uh, by uh, by definition of what yeah. we call cool, right? Because yeah. you could debate. It's all fucking. You could you could debate and argue and that electronica. Nobody's like more famous than like fucking Kanye, dude. Fuck Kanye's has caused more yeah. fucking shit in in mm. in. Pu- Let's play his instruments and, again. And is like a, is will become will be iconic whether we like it or not. You know yeah, what but what I'm saying is like you have a band, right? And what you always recognize from the band is the lead singer, but there's no cool like yeah. drummer or like oh, they're I all get, dependent I, on lights and shit to do like, all the like hype. From back them. in the day, I get, like I they were characters. I get, I get what you're saying. Like Slash was a character. Flea was a character. Neil yeah. Pert, the drummer from Rush, like, yeah. you know, he's like fucking iconic. Like I can't think of any. Maybe Les I'm, Claypool from Primus, one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. there anything like that now that you can mm. think about? Hmm. I mean, are we counting like Maynard for Ma- Tool still and people Ooh, like that? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's still but old the, though. Yeah, they, they, it is old. And what's crazy? So talking talking about that because shit has become. I mean, Kelly Clarkson. So <laughs> if you've watched Tool since the beginning, Jeez. if you watched Tool She's since the great. beginning to now, so like, so they got a show coming up this week, right? Maynard now sits back in the dark. So he used to be this iconic. It's about him. He's so goth. And now he now he's now he takes a spotlight off of him and he sings the, the concert, which for a spectator it kind of sucks because Maynard used to be fun yeah, to watch. Like him, yeah, yeah, because he is such a, a character. But a part of that is his his maturity of bit playing in the band for as long as he has to not needing that limelight anymore. And so he's he actually intentionally stands behind the band huh. when he actually plays. It's just Did you know that I, I, that that's, is kind of strange. That's crazy. Yeah. I think it's maybe because you don't have as many like bands. You know what I'm saying? No. Like you used to. I mean, you do though, right? Like, kind of. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, they're there. I think it's just, a false statement. Mm. But like, like Tommy Lee, like there's another different character. now. That's you know all. what I'm saying? Yeah, but here's what I, I got to caution you right now because this Maybe is because I'm just I don't know anybody now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right now, some 25 year old kids are rolling General. their fucking eyes right now, yeah. and because they're all these names are flying through their head. Well, about, look at the Warp Tour. Dude. Like the uh, Warp Tour is like crazy now. Like, could, I don't think someone could be more iconic looking than like a Lady Gaga. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like somebody who does shit like that. So for mm. us. You're connecting to our generation and music because you're so disconnected from gen- yeah. music. Lady Gaga's now. like punk rock now. Yeah, it's pretty fucking <laughs> yeah. rad. You know who had a crazy drummer was Prince before he died. I went and watched a, one of his concerts, and he had a drummer that went on a drum solo for a, a long time. And the dude, his hands were moving so fucking fast. I'm not exaggerating. I thought for sure he was going to catch fire. Like <laughs> he was moving so fast. I'm like, there's no way like my arms would Dude, build remember so- when that was a thing. Like you would, <laughs> I remember even somebody had the balls to take the, a drum set, lift it up like in the air and then was like spinning them. Neil Pert. Like upside down. Yeah. Like that was like a whole event. Was Bro. to watch the drummer just like, just like go through space. If you're a kid like, and you're in, fuck? and you're into music and you yeah. want to learn how, and you and you're a drummer, it was great. Look up Neil Pert. Go on YouTube. Watch his oh, drum solo. One of the greatest all time. He will blow sure. your brain. Sure. Well, because oh, Steve Ray Vaughan died, so you know we don't really have a guitar player to, you know, pick yeah. up the pieces yeah. from there. You got You got to put uh, uh, Tommy Morrison in there also from uh, uh, what you call it too. You got you got to throw him in there. Mm. Great, one of the greatest all time mm-hmm. from uh, audio. Not a uh, fucking. Oh, why can't I not think of uh, uh, Rage? Rage is freaking oh. guitar. How can you not? You have to yeah. put him. To, not Tommy. It's Morano. No, no. You're thinking. I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay. Who who was the drummer? Sure. Who was the drummer for uh, for Def Leppard? Oh yeah. What was his name? The one arm drummer. Yeah. He really. He was known for just because he had a. He's a like a. Yeah. A trooper. Well, now that we've alienated yeah. everybody <laughs> under the age of thirty. I know. Yeah. No, I hate uh, Wally. Tom, Mare- Tom Morello. I said, Tom Tommy, I said Tommy See, I Morrison. Close, I, said, <laughs> I said Tommy Morrison. More, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. Tom Just, Morello. Justin's often correct, but then one of us will be like, I don't think so. And he'll be like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> you so need to have more confidence in yourself, Justin. God damn it. You're right a lot of the time. I know. Damn it. <sighs> ah, Bring on the bird. The confidence building bird. Ah! Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from 
Craig Greer 8. What are your guys' views on pre-exhausting ancillary muscles before training an area? For example, triceps before chest. Uh, usually a bad idea. It's mm. just, I mean, bad idea might be a strong term, but you, I, you, usually almost... So let's think about that. Do you I, want your triceps to fatigue while you're doing the bench press? No, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to, to fatigue a, a support uh, muscle, especially one that works on one joint before you do these compound movements or yeah. before you lift heavy. I can. There are certain situations where I'll do this, but it's pretty rare. I can't think of too many times where I've actually had a client hit triceps before, you know, like isolate their triceps before doing chest exercises or work their biceps before back or if anything, anything like that. I'd do it after. You mm-hmm. know, if I was trying to. Like, well, the only my- the only place I see. Uh, even thinking about doing that would be if I had someone specifically who was like trying to develop their triceps, right? Yeah. Because they had, it was a lagging body part or their biceps. So then we may do that. Uh, we may pre-exhaust the tricep or the bicep before you do that big compound movement. But it's kind of silly because it's going to hinder how much weight you could probably pull and do. Right. You know, so for example, like taking, uh, you know, bicep curls, pre-exhausting, and then going over to do a deadlift, more than likely you're not going to be hitting towards your max deadlift when you're doing that. So you're not going to get the, the max benefits of that movement uh, because you've pre-exhausted a, a ancillary muscle. I mean, so. here, here's an easier one. Do some curls, do a bunch of curls, and then go do pull-ups. <laughs> Yeah, like, how many, <laughs> like how many pull-ups? So how effective that is? But you, I mean, it will get. I mean, you want to blast your biceps. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. that's a. I guess if you had this great, impressive back, but you had these terrible arms, like you had yeah. just, then maybe I would do things like well, that. If you want right? to look like, impressive for like a couple minutes, you know what I mean? That's, that's the way to go. <laughs> that, yeah. Get that arm pump. Like, oh my god, my arms are gonna explode. I, I can see. So uh, here's a. You know, it's funny. I actually kind of do this with something, and I do this with my calves. So because my calves are an area, I'm constantly trying to increase volume and I'm always mm-hmm. trying to touch them because it's a, it's do a, you really week. hit them before everything else. Not every, not always before, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but what I will do is I'll intermittently do this, especially on days when I'm not trying to like max squat, but I'm working on like depth mm. because one of the things that's helped my calves more than anything else was actually really deep squatting. Deep squatting has helped keep my calf size more than all the volume of calf work I used to have to do before. Isn't that funny? So it's really interesting to see what's going to happen as I start to increase that. I'm just now getting ready to start really increasing my volume on my calves. Really what's maintained my calves is mostly my deep squatting more than anything else right now. And yeah. of course, we all know that my calves are not impro- impressive. They went from terrible to less terrible. But the point is, <laughs> I think they look great. This is a this is a time where I might use they this because it's an area that I I want more development. So what I would do is I'll go over, I'll pre exhaust calves, and then I'll go over and work on my really deep squats. So um, with my really deep squats, I know I'm going to get a little more of my calves incorporated. I'm not doing super heavy weight, so it's not a big deal that I'm pre exhausting a a secondary muscle that's assisting in this movement. And so for me, I'm looking more at it, the calf gains instead of the the gains that I'm going to get. Well, this might not completely apply to the uh, the triceps and in, in using it for the chest, but like say like the triceps weren't really engaging as much within your chest press. So the same kind of technique, like we would apply for you know, uh, excuse, excuse me, getting the glutes activated for, like for your squat. So say that's cho- choked up every time you say glutes. Oh my god, glutes! <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. I cry a little bit and. Um, you know, so so using that as sort of a primer to to get uh, you know a sleepy uh, sort of a non-responsive uh, type muscle to to contribute. That's a good point because when you talk about lower body, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. And and mainly because you don't necessarily see uh, people having a poor connection to biceps and triceps like they would to their glutes or hamstrings, or just ca- not near or, or as, calves. You know, yeah, like, it's just not nearly you don't, as you common. Don't see that. Yeah. Like but I, I feel like, especially with what I'm talking about right now, that, getting uh, it, it, my feet all get woken up. You're doing calf raises. You know, you're you're waking your feet wow, up. That's a good point. You're waking your feet up big time. Yeah, that's a good point. And so I, I and then I go over and I go get into a squat, and I mean, I feel like I am grounded more mm. than I more than I would be if I were just to go in, do my normal priming, go right in my squatting. Mm-hmm. And since I'm not, like I said, I'm I would never do that on a like a, a PR chasing day or a singles doubles day. Like I'm not 
priorities yeah, are different. Just, yeah, your but, energy conserve. You know, you're trying to conserve that. Going yeah, to but when I'm when I'm thinking, hey, mobility, connectivity. Also, I'm also trying to increase volume on calves. Hey, I might pre-exhaust my calves and then I go walk over and do the squats. So here's something else to consider. So I've actually promoted uh, pre-exhausting large muscle groups uh, before doing a compound movement. So. I would do like a isolation movement for chest and then I'd immediately go and do a compound movement and it really hits the chest uh, really, really hard. You could do this for back too with like a straight arm pull down and do a pull up. Now, if I flip that, like this person's asking and I hit my, and I'm trying to conceptualize this because I've never really done this, but I'm trying to imagine going into a bench press with triceps that are already fatigued and pumped. Uh, I'm definitely horrible. Well, I'm definitely not going to lift as much weight, but let's say I go light. If I go light and I've got fatigued triceps, you know what it might actually make me do? It might actually make me focus more on my chest. Squeezing your chest. To move the bar. Interesting. You know I, what I'm saying? I've done this. I've, I've gone both ways. So, and, and, and I think. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's now fake. it's coming out. That came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, it went in right. <laughs> <laughs> I, and this, it goes back to what I, I tell people. We are creatures of habit. And we could sit here all day long and talk about what's more, what's better. And, you know, th- all this debate and ta- talk is really splitting hairs in the grand scheme of things. You know, nothing trumps consistency. And, and what you got to pay attention to is what you're consistently doing. So first becoming consistent, then you become consistent. Then you learn to detach, have some perspective on your training program and see what do I do consistently all the time? Well, if you never pre-exhaust some of these secondary muscles before you go into a lift and you've never done that before, there's probably some pretty good damn benefits to that. Now, I wouldn't r- recommend it as a general rule because there's some, you know, compound. It makes you talk like this. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> Com- compound movements by themselves have great carryover into these secondary mu- uh, muscles like triceps. So when I'm doing a big bench press that was is primarily for my bench, I'm also getting great work for my tricep. But when if you are always exhausting the triceps, which are a much smaller m- muscle, you're not muscle group. You're not going to be able to get up as much weight, which in turn could end up hindering your programming over over a long period of time. So really is assessing what you do all more more often and then intermittently putting stuff like this. I, I'm a huge fan of that. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com, put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to bengreenfieldfitness.com forward slash nature bite, put in the code mind pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Lucas Hunt 10. How imperative is it to eat 30 minutes after your workout in order to hit the anabolic window? Can this limit be stretched? Anabolic you will lose everything! Window! Get your shake! The Holy an- shit! The anabolic window. What a like Per, what a great marketing tool yeah. to sell. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the urgency behind it. Yeah, like, you know if, I mean? like, like if you eat protein right after your workout, that is going to maximize muscle building. And if you don't, uh, you're missing out on a lot of growth. Mm. And, you know, hey, what's convenient at the gym right after my workout? Uh, a shake or a bar. Yeah. So, Pre-made. yeah, uh, the science actually shows that there's no, there's no real benefit. In fact... If you really break it down and really analyze the science, the anabolic window lasts like six hours. Like it's slow. Yeah. It's quite a bit after your workout. Um, there's really no need to eat right after your workout unless you plan on working out shortly again later on uh, during that day. If that's the case, then you want to replenish glycogen and stuff a little faster, eating right afterwards. But otherwise, you know, it doesn't it doesn't provide any extra benefit. What's your guys' theories on the digestive process with that? Like. When we're when we're right after a hard workout, 
do you think uh, within that 30 minutes, do you think that there is a, a faster digestive process that's happening because your body is still- glucose uh, depleted? Yes, right. Well, that and that and if you stretch that, that you still would be though. So that yeah. wouldn't really change. Right. I'm thinking more along, I'm, 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 my CNS is ramped up. My heart rate's been, is uh, still probably beating at a harder rate. So I'm my body's still feel working. Like you're more receptive to- Yeah, and, and I'm empty. So it's like, okay, feeling that- would that, could that speed up the process of digesting this food versus letting myself completely calm all the way back down mm. two, three hours later having food? What's your thoughts so, on that? So uh, mm. exercise is, uh, activates the sympathetic system, which is the, like the fight or flight response, uh, the catecholamine release, you know, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Food is, paras is uh, uh, parasympathetic. So after you eat, mm. growth hormone goes up and other... Uh, things happen in the body that actually relax your body uh, for recovery and repair. This is why some of you, after working out and you have a big ass meal after your workout, find that you may want to take a nap right after your workout because once you eat, you get that kind of that relax you know effect. So I don't know if if there's a benefit to eating when you're a para in a sympathetic state or you know necessarily. I know sympath a sympathetic state tends to be appetite suppressing. So like if I give you you know, if I inject you with norepinephrine, it's more likely to suppress your appetite than it is to stimulate okay, it. Okay, so now that makes a lot of sense. Here, And the reason where I'm going with this and why I'm prodding you with these questions is because if I'm on, if I'm like trying to gain, which I just switched gears over this way, right? Um, it is hard for me to get enough food in. So one of the strategies, and by the way, I don't give a shit about the 30 minutes. It's just as soon as I can get to it. Right, it's not like this. Ah, oh, this window because that to me is bullshit. And the 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 difference between twenty five minutes and forty five minutes, and the variance between every single human being and what you right. ate before and, and how overall you volume at the end of the day. Right. So I mean, there's so many fucking variables that can make every one of those studies completely false or way off. And there's too much variance there, right? On the thirty minutes, exactly. So I know is that funny. They came up with this. Like, 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Fuck like, like for just, re, just for a second, just think, chew, chew on this for a minute. That that all the changes based off of how you slept the day before, how hydrated you are, how intense the training training was, what exactly you trained, what type of person you are, like genetically, like we're all so uniquely different. So to put a time like 30 minutes to anabolic windows, but just a bunch of bullshit. So, but what I do find and what I, what I do like the strategy when I'm trying to get a lot of calories. So right after I train really hard like that, going straight to get a meal in as, as soon as I can, not like doesn't matter if it's 20, 30, 40 minutes, just as soon as I can get food in, my body I feel like digests it pretty quick and then I feel like I can eat again within an hour. And when I'm somebody who's trying to get more calories in for the day to, to gain size, I find that very helpful for me and beneficial. And now the, now the reverse is true when I'm trying to lean out. Now, when I my priorities shift, when I'm leaning out, after I get done working out, I actually try and stretch as long as I can before I eat. Mm. And and that does it's because I'm not worried that my body's muscle is going to fall off and I need to maximize this anabolic window. No, what I'm thinking is I've completely depleted the body and now my body's having to utilize fat as energy. So I'm going to I'm going to maximize that as long as I can because my goal is to f burn fat right now. So years ago when I thought this was true and it wasn't that long ago that I actually thought this. In fact, I think I promoted this when we first started Mind Pump um, until I looked deeper into the science and, and saw that it was it was false. It was it was one of the last things that I realized was was baloney. But I remember thinking to myself, like, what's the evolutionary advantage to building more muscle if you eat post workout? And what I thought was is maybe it was a way of rewarding a successful hunt. Mm. So like someone just hunted food, they successfully killed it, and then they eat, and it rewards those people that eat right after a successful hunt versus those who hunt and then don't succeed. And But then when I looked into it deeper, it's like, you just killed an animal. You're probably not going to eat it 30 minutes afterwards. You're probably going to, yeah. it's going to take a while to drag it back, drag it back or clean and, it or, yep. you know, I don't think that's the case. So I don't think there was any evolutionary advantage uh, to eating that, uh, to eating post-workout. Um, and again, you dive into the science well, the only and real, you find there's no benefit. Well, the only real benefit to, uh, you know, being able to process protein more is to restrict yourself from it right if you restrict protein uh here and there you'll 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 be more responsive to it you know you increase your body's uh, sensitivity, sensitivity to protein yeah. is what they're finding but you know uh, this is just one of those you know myths that's pushed and promoted 
because it I- increases supplement sales. It just yeah. really does. I mean, there's a reason why they said 30 minutes and not six hours. I mean, 30 minutes, like you don't have time to go home. Like no, I got to go somewhere. It's almost impossible to make 30 minutes if you like <laughs> if you don't carry something. That's right. Yeah. And so it's sold. This this right here, this the high protein in like eat a ton of protein intake and the small meals, uh, you know, myth. Those three alone probably were responsible for more protein sales than anything I can think of. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, it, it's a it's again one of those one of those myths. Here's the thing you want to consider. They'll say something like, eat post workout, spike insulin because insulin will drive amino acids into muscle. It's anabolic. Well, you know what's inversely related to insulin is growth hormone. Yeah. So you may get an insulin spike, but you're going to smash down your growth hormone exactly. spike. Exactly. And growth hormone is also fat burning and anabolic. And you do get a growth hormone rise after your workout or during your workout. And if you don't eat, that'll stay high. Honestly, I- There's a balance there. I think there, I mean, to me, it just makes so much sense, right? Unless you're somebody, the only way it's different, right, for me, is if I'm really lean. If I'm really, really lean and I'm all I'm doing is trying to eat, otherwise, I see huge benefits in is having a hard workout and then stretching out how long I can go before I, do. before I have to eat. I never eat post-workout. And I'll, one of the reasons why I do it is not because I'm trying to burn fat or build muscle. I just feel better doing it. Like I have energy post-workout. If I eat a big meal, I tend to feel tired. Yeah, and I'd rather not. So I just, I just don't eat. Well, that's why I think you know, even though like this isn't for everybody, but the warrior diet, like that, has made the most sense. You know, in, in terms of that, just based off of like I do, I get tired after I eat a big meal, and so for me to time it a little bit more around, uh, you know, the end of the day before I'm, I'm not planning any activities at, at that point. Like it makes a lot more sense mm-hmm. to me. Well, it, I do want to defend though the, and this has nothing to do with the thirty minutes. You know, the, the one problem I have with stretching the meals out, being a guy who's 220, you know, this- It's harder to get your calories. It's, it is. It's harder for me. To, and, and, and in particular, protein. Like, and, yeah. I, and I've discussed this before that, you know, I know I can't be alone on this. I know I can't be alone on, I'm not the only person that gravitates towards carbohydrates when he's not tracking and paying attention. Like when I am tracking and paying attention, I can, uh, I, I realize that I am grossly under eating protein, grossly. With me tracking, it's actually, it takes focus for me to hit that 200, you know, 175 to 200 grams of protein every day. It takes effort to do that. That's with tracking. So I know damn well when I'm not, that I'm grossly under eating it. So, you know, timing food and getting things in, like for me, like that's where the strategy is like, you know, where am I at in my day with hitting the targets that I need to hit for my body? That matter, that that trumps. Well, and I think that's that's kind of the point, like where people are seeing benefit is that they are consistent in their rituals of eating. And it's not the, Thank you. the window of that Thank you. That is my, and that was yeah. the point I'm trying to you get across. You know what they did? They've actually created another meal time. Think yeah. about it. And if you're in fitness, your your go to meal times are right after workout, breakfast, yep. lunch, post workout, dinner. Those are like your your go. And the post workout meal is like whenever you work out, and it's always it's usually some kind of a supplement. But fuck me, that's really brilliant of the supplement industry yep. because just like the food industry, the food industry did the same thing. They created meal times, and then they created meals that we associate with those times. So we have a, a whole category of foods. That like you you can't go to if you go to a restaurant at dinner time, the odds of finding pancakes and eggs on the menu is very it's very low because that's a breakfast food, or you know vice versa. You go to find a, a restaurant that's open at eight a.m. that's going to serve you, you know uh, you know a burrito or something state you know something that's a dinner type of like roast beef or something like that. It's not as common. So I'm going to start a restaurant that all foods <laughs> all the time. Yeah, all, all foods day. all yeah. the time. Right. Here, the last thing you want to Salisbury uh, steak. Right on uh, your For kind breakfast. of so gross. I know, so gross. <laughs> right out, right along the lines of what you were saying, Adam, is that people don't realize that uh, food makes you hungrier. Like when you eat, you tend to spark your appetite. When well, you don't eat, you tend to lose your appetite. And that and that yeah. is what I what I'm trying to get at with the right after the workout I eat, I then find that I can eat again within an hour. Now when I when I stretch it out. I get great benefits of burning fat, but then I end. I also feel like my appetite starts to suppress, which is awesome when you're in leaning, when you're trying to lean down. So there's advantage advantages to both, and you know these are these are little types of strategies that personally 
I've I have, I implement into my eating. So I, I don't hang up. I don't get hung up on the 30 minute window mark as much as I'm paying attention to what is my current goal? Am I heavily focused on building or am I heavily focused on leaning my body out? And whichever one those uh, whichever one I'm more focused on would dictate how I schedule this eating. And if you're somebody who's like Sal, who is right likes right where his body composition is has great balance in his eating then really it's about how you feel mm. yeah. and what make what makes you feel good and and that's your priority i like to speak to the people that are trying to make body composition changes which i think is important to preface this whole journey that we're watching I, this dawned on me as i was moving to the bulk right now and it's fucking hard for me to bulk i don't want it my body does not and i and i think that's important for people to understand that you know I personally love to be 225, 230 pounds because I feel massive. I feel out extra large shirts. I like to walk in a room and my presence be felt because I'm that big guy. Like I like that. I'd be I'd be lying to say I didn't like that. But I tell you right now, my body doesn't like that. My body would much rather be at about 195 to 205 pounds and when I'm trying to bulk, I'm going against that. So I think it's important that people know that that there's there's these strategies these things that I implement into my routines that I wouldn't be following if all I was doing was intuitive eating and intuitive training and just trying to be overall healthy so there's different there's different populations of people that we're speaking to when we talk about different topics mind pump in general is like a health wellness you know podcast where we're trying to talk to the masses but there are individual variances with that because some of you have goals. Some of you are 180 pounds, probably don't belong being more than 190, but deep down want to be 230. Like I'll share with you what what it takes to do that and some of the habits that I have implemented in order to do that. But also understand that there you need to recognize that, that your body may be telling you that isn't also ideally. If you have to start to schedule things like this to get to a certain size. Well, dude, I remember working out at Gold's. I'd see dudes lift and literally go in the locker room and come out with their Tupperware and eat in the gym. Yeah. Because they had to eat right after the workout. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember thinking Super like, paranoid. Yeah, I remember thinking like, you could just go home and eat. Yeah. You don't got <laughs> to eat on the bench. stay here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, yeah. I used to see that in, that's very popular in our gym uh, because we have so many pro competitors. And I used to see that and it would, it was mind boggling to me when I knew they were trying to cut and lean out. I'm like, wait a second, you, you're trying to lean down right now. You're, you know, 7% body fat trying to get even leaner. You just train the body. You're already kind of in a caloric deficit, but you fed before. You just trained. You probably depleted your glycogen stores to about 80%, 90%. And then now you're going to refeed right away when really you'd be way better off extending that period for another hour, two hours. No, they'd rather do an hour of cardio. Exactly. Cut out the post-workout meal. Yeah, and this is what you would see. You would see this with competitors. So if you're a competitor and you're listening to this, this is foolish. I would see them go to the locker room, refeed because they want to make that anabolic window uh, food, and then go get on the treadmill, and then go and then go burn for an hour. Like uh-huh. what? Yeah. What are you doing? You're trying to lean. Why? <laughs> Why would you refeed and refuel everything and then go back? Like you, you just that just doesn't make sense to me. It Every just it would, movement needs it would just energy. Boggle me. And it, so this is very very popular. I know that I probably lost a ton of people that are just your average Jane or Joe trying to get in shape, but this is. Uh, a huge epidemic in the fucking competitive world. Bearded Iron 25. What is potentially more important when squatting? Getting the proper setup or thinking of cues during the lift? So I wanted this question. Hmm. And the reason why I wanted this question was I actually just had a really deep conversation with Katrina this weekend when her and I were working out in here. And, you know, as... I've been I've been changing her squat mechanics over the last four or five years, and rem, those that don't know, Katrina was a you know uh, Division One collegiate level athlete, uh, full ride basketball, so she was always in shape. She she had good mechanics when she squatted for the most part, but good mechanics by standards of old old training that old trainers would teach, which is ninety degrees, toes straight you know, right down to 90, whatever type of deal. But she used to be extremely quad dominant. She had these unbelievable, gorgeous legs, and she had a small butt in comparison to the size of her quads and legs. And I would tell her that, you know, you got this sleepy butt syndrome and you're very quad dominant. It's because of your squat. So long story short, 
you know, we've been tweaking her squat and she's got an incredible squat now, but it, she was just giving me a hard time because almost every time she squats, I still have something to, to critique her on. Yeah. And I explained to her that this is kind of a process and, and it's like a skill, you know, like a golf swing. Like you're not going to have this beautiful golf swing the first even hundred times you do it. It's going to take time and time and practice. And each time you're making subtle, subtle little cues and little tiny tweaks to it. And for me, at what I told her, I said, when I teach you all these different cues, I actually really want you to hone in on the one that when you apply it in your squat, you feel the biggest difference, whether that be in strength or uh, no pain or greater depth, whatever that cue is, and then focus on that cue until you until you cement it in, until it becomes routine and habit. Mm. And, and an example of this with myself currently right now. So as I got deeper into my squat, the the, the, the part that starts to default uh, back to a bad pattern is uh, the rounding of my upper back. So I, I lose that thoracic you know connection back there to where I can squeeze my shoulder blades once I hit really, really deep. So for me, that is the I get locked into my squat. I've gotten good habits on my step back, my dropping my dropping the hips and knees at the same like those those I've now cemented in really well. But now when I get to the bottom, I lose that connection back there. So that's really all I'm thinking now when I'm squatting. I've 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 moved on from the other cues because I've cemented those in really well. And now I've found a new cue that I notice the greatest change when I'm heavily focused on. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Do you guys how do you guys Yeah, as far as like what's stands out right now is, is the major sort of totem pole priority for you know this is this is a striking sort of an imbalance and here's how I can get this to contribute to this lift like I mean I've, I went through the same process with Courtney like uh, being quad dominant and and making sure that uh, you know all these checkpoints we established but for the priority for me was like back supporting so adding load to her back like there's a compromised um, position like in her lower back. So just the activation of the core and the bracing component uh, pre uh, dropping into position was, was critical. So that's the, I harp on that cue, like, like constantly with her and so to, to bend the bar and to brace and, and, and squeeze and, and get that connectivity, that deep core connectivity, especially when down she gets down into the low position, because, you know, at that point, it's like a lot of times you rely on your joints and you rely on that sort of set position to then now transition and go back with the weight mm -hmm. back up. Whereas like, I need that connectivity. I need you to be still responsive with your muscles to contribute to this well, because we're teaching them you know how to how to respond correctly and then this is going to save your back one cue that i think uh can do as much harm as good and this i just learned this recently is when you're telling people to sit back oh, yeah. you know sit yeah. back sit back sit back and after talking to uh jordan uh muscle doc mm -hmm. he was explaining how yeah you tell people to sit back and what ends up happening is they get this uh they go way back on their heels their toes come off the floor which i see a lot I see this a lot with people who are trying to squat right. Not with people who are just squatting, but you'll see people sit there and try and do it right. And they'll to their toes will actually come off the floor or one of their toes will come off the because floor. Because they've been told because to sit back on their heels. Sit so. back on their heels. And what they'll do is they'll over, they'll, they'll put their pelvis in an anterior tilt excessive. Mm. And one of the complaints that you'll hear from these people is that it feels like their hip flexors catching. When in reality, it's, well, it may be a hip flexor because because they're going in such a strong anterior tilt at the bottom, the hip flexor is contracting really hard to get in that position. And the second thing that may be happening is some hip impingement. Mm. And so uh, Dr. Shallow is like, look, just squat, like bend the knees first, actually. Don't sit back so hard. Like that cue, yeah. you have to be really careful with because it can actually cause problems. And I have 100% run into this with clients in the past where I say sit back and then those are the complaints I get and I see their feet doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, where their toes Start come off. Well, up. this was something, this is close to home for me also. So if you watch my old, and we talked about this earlier, right? My old squats, this was me. I used to sit back first, you know, and I always thought, you know, I'm a really tall guy. I have got these long levers, yeah, so I need posterior. Let's so I need to slide. Yeah, I need yeah. to slide my hips back first before I drop in, and that's how I used to squat. And in fact, 
a, a, not that long ago, I was still squatting that way. It wasn't until I really worked on all my mobility. And then as I got better with my squatting, I was like, no, this is like a, I'm dropping in the hole. Mm -hmm. The only time really you set back a little bit is if you have a low bar squat, right? If you have a really, really low bar squat, the first initial movement will be slightly back and then down. Yeah. And if you have, if, if you have issues activating glutes, it's less about sitting back and more about getting your glutes to fire. Yeah. So, you know, doing priming properly, strengthening those hip extending muscles, and then your squat's going to look a little more natural. The other thing, too, that I've noticed that is probably the number one problem with people's uh, inability to squat uh, is their feet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm saying that now, and this is completely – had you asked me this question – yeah, a year ago I would have said it was oh, a this hip. is this like is an earth shadow. I would have I would have said it was all Doctor Dr. Yeah. Brink influence on us well, for sure because so, I was never somebody who was that. Well, now so, I look at people's feet. That's all I look well, at. Well, so I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this right. Yeah, so when, when you're a child and you're growing up, there are certain patterns and ways you develop that become hardwired. And I'll give you here's an example. Like a, a child can learn several languages and not have an accent in any of them. But if you have an adult learn a new language, they'll learn that language, but they'll always gonna, they're always going to have an accent. And the reason why is because the brain actually hardwires certain pathways that really don't change once you're a certain age. You, there's, it's very moldable. So that's, and very a, that's a really good analogy because that's yeah. very similar to biomechanics. So, yeah. Right. So if you look at our feet... Uh, unless you grew up in a you know uh, a hunter gatherer tribe, yeah. our feet are fucked up and they're permanently fucked up, permanent. I don't care how much fixing and working you do on your They've feet. They've been supported our whole they, life. They they will never reach what their full potential could have been had you done this as a child. Had now, you stayed connected. Has you stayed connected. Now that being said, your feet, your feet will forever have an accent, dude. Yeah. For sure. Like I'm like, telling like you, a southern accent. Take your shoes off and your socks off and look down at your feet. One of your toes probably doesn't touch the floor when you're standing. You may have your big toe maybe turning in from the shoe. If you're a big person with big feet, your feet are likely to be really fucked up. Pay attention if mo how often you see uh, the your big toe will have a big callus on both sides. That's yeah. from pronating. It's so. just it's just your our feet are really weak and fucked up, and that has completely altered the way we walk, sit, squat, like do everything. And so I've noticed for squatting for myself, like the biggest changes I've made. Is through working on my feet more than almost anything else. And what I'm realizing is working on my hips as much as I had was really compensating yeah. for my feet. Well, you know, so, it's weird too, because like back, it, it was trendy to have all these like new cross trainer kind of shoes and all that stuff. Like, you know, going through, I remember like starting as a trainer, it was like, oh, the fashionable Nike shoe and this and that. And like, it was so like it's such moon shoes to me now like it was, everything was so like cushiony and supported and like that was the game was to like who oh, yeah. could cushion the heel the most or who could cushion you know uh, the strike of of the foot you know running the best and 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 once i actually moved from that type of a shoe uh being a trainer to just chucks again it was like earth shattering well dude uh if i put squat shoes on which squat shoes will have a nice heel lift in them like, I don't know how many, how big the heel lift is on average, but it'll have a heel lift. I'll put squat shoes on and immediately my squats feel way better. Oh. Like, I'll put them all squat down and be like, oh, wow, I can squat comfortable now. Like, that's a big red flag that something's up with my feet because it, it shouldn't make that big of a fucking difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I think just practicing that so i squatted the other day it's been a while since i had, and i love to do this mm. so now you went back and put your shoes well, up. so on the yeah. opposite now like in the past i was most always squatting with you know my belt and shoes around if i got heavy shoes or belt are coming out and that was a, a, a habit of mine and then you know i would occasionally get barefoot or work on that shit where now it's the flip i'm almost always barefoot or chucks or and deep squatting and mobility focused and then intermittently i will say you know what let's let's strap the belt on throw some shoes on throw some some guided help here and see what i can do fucking a bro yeah. let me tell you dropping into a squat right now with shoes and a belt on now it feels like it's cheating yeah. I feel like I'm cheating. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm like, this is way too easy. Yeah. I've had to put squat shoes, you know, yeah. the lift in oh. the heel. Come on. Oh, I'm not going to lie, man. It was like, whoa. I mean, I haven't even been training heavy and I threw that on there and I, was, I couldn't help but just, I, I was like, okay, I got to stop because of weight. I was just yeah. piling the weight on each, each set. I was like, 
Dude, it's when's it gonna get hard? Have Let's you go. seen the new uh, trend? They're trying. They're trying to make these like uh, sort of like sticky soles that you can I put saw on the that. bottom of your feet. I, I saw some, that. Yeah, a couple of people tagged me on that and were like, "Is this gonna be a thing?" And I'm like, "I don't know." I mean, like, no, I haven't the, seen that. What the more it? people are talking about grounding and doing all this stuff with their toes, I mean, at least it's like. I mean, it's pretty damn gimmicky, but like, uh, you know, like you could just go around with your barefoot. I mean, come on. You can, a pussy. you can, but you need to like, you still need to do exercise and stuff. Just because you take your shoes off and walk around barefoot, like yeah. your feet are going to move the way they always move. Oh, that's yeah. it. That's important to note. I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because, you know, I, I know in my Insta stories I was sharing that, you know, I take the shoes off and, and walk barefoot with the dogs. I mean- that's just the first step of it. You have to be aware of how your feet are striking the ground because you're still going to pronate shoe or no shoe. You know, it's yeah, just, and you don't want to rush it either because, yeah. like, you know, like just going from that cushion support to no support that's a, that's a pretty yeah. drastic step. You're gonna you're yeah. gonna get hurt. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy. In fact, and I was just I literally had this conversation yesterday that what we consider to be good, like ugly feet and good, and what feet look good is so fucking skewed. Like if we look at modern people's feet. Even yeah. ones that we think look nice and manicured, they're super just fun. And, I, and it sucks because I can see it now. Now when I look at feet, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. Hey. I can see like all the they dysfunction. They should look like gross sausage fingers. They should look like yeah. hands like yeah. on the floor just, with yeah. spread toes. Yeah, like and like you grapes. Nice yeah. pad of, of yeah. callus on the bottom. And, oh, my God. Yeah, you don't want to suck on like those. my so. worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah. But those are the kind yeah. of feet that you, you should probably have. So With hair. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. All right, our next question is from Spet13. What is the largest animal you think you can defeat in the octagon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a ridiculous I would, question. I, I love a, it. I'd say a small rhino. Yeah, right. You know what? <laughs> a though? small so, rhino. So, so here's the rules. Dude, the rules are tough skin. The rules are, of course, no weapons. No uh, weapons. No weapons. No weapons. You, no weapons. It you has have to, be, to wrestle this thing. It has to be in this animal's like environment. So you oh, can't, in their environment. Well, what I mean is like you can't. I we're say, doing this in the arena. You can't. You are, but what I mean is you can't say a shark and then put him in the arena and then uh, just watch him die. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it has to be in the water. Punch right? that shark yeah, in the okay. face. Yeah. Got you. Got you. So, so humans are weak, dude. Yeah. In a hand-to-hand combat, we are massive pussies. I, I'll tell you what, right now, a fucking koala bear could aggressively fuck you up very easily. No, way. maybe, yes. maybe you, yes. maybe you. No, <laughs> no <laughs> way. Yes, well, it's gonna be like, dude, they're so lazy. They're like eating eucalyptus. Dude, no, shit, I, and hey, just, okay, like, okay, let's what's let's the worst they're gonna do. Clear on this because I know you're. I I know where you're going with this argument because you claim like almost every animal could beat us. And that might be you, bro. Yeah. I guarantee. I know. I guarantee that a bastard. koala bear, a raccoon, a, do- a dog, a hyena. I'm, I know I'm gonna get cut and I'm gonna get yeah. scratched yeah. up. I will get rabies. I will yeah. win. I will win that battle, bro. Yeah. I will choke a fucking koala out for yeah. sure, yeah. bro. Let me. Okay, so first of all, how big are they? Like, like a little teddy bear. What are you, a kitty cat? Is that all you could kill? First of all, it's not just about surviving. So I'm sure you could stay in there, cover up, and ah. First of all, it's win the fight to death. I got body mass on that. Win the fight to death. Do you know how hard? I will kill. Do you know how hard? Do you know how hard it would be to kill a koala bear? To get your hands on it and, and hold it in a position like to where keep punching it, you like could kill it while it's fucking clawing like, I would and biting it, heel and just stomp it. Do I would suffocate it? Do yeah. you? Okay, let me ask you this: stomp Do you think it. you? Do you think if you oh, curb stomp it? Do you think if you and a sixty pound fit and aggressive pull, uh, pit bull in a fucking arena, do you think you'd be able to kill one fit, with yeah. your bare hands? Fit yes. and aggressive. No. I got I got a pit bull down too. No, you, no dude. Hey, you can talk about what you can't. Like, not, not with so my arms. We've but established like, can, this. Sal can, can only, only kill a small kitten. Yeah, a small baby right. kitten is as far as the <laughs> biggest animal that he will kill. I'm going to go out and say... I could get a. I think you're mis- You're totally mis. Uh, you're totally underestimating. I wrestled a wild far- animal. I wrestled farm animals growing up, so I got a little. I got a little background. Uh, I got a little bit of background here. You know. Yeah, you got a professional. Yeah, yeah exactly. so I feel. Yeah. I feel confident that I could kill a small. Cat, I was a rodeo though. clown, so. No, no, I wasn't. No, dude. First of all, have you ever seen a bobcat actually kill something in the wild? And a bobcat's not big, dude. Mm. And not saying it'll kill you. 
But you will have oh, a that that would hurt. I, they, they got claws. And here's and the thing: <laughs> they will outlast you. Like you're stuck in an octagon. If you're fighting a 60 pound pit bull, first of all, you're not gonna unless you land a lucky blow. Well, what kind of clothes gonna, am I wearing? It's gonna you know bloody I mean? I got, you like, up. Steel toe boots. Like, Dude, a pet- no nothing. You're uh, in there. It's hand to hand. You're naked. Like you're in a animals, loincloth. You're naked. Animals naked. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Here's one in, bite. You're naked. Well, like, I'm defense, already gonna feel vulnerable. And the fact that you threw a pit bull out. Okay. In defense, Listen, and I'm first protecting. My if junk. he locked onto you, it's gonna be tough for you to get off. Get him off. I, I, He's gonna outlast you, dude. And you're gonna have to bite him back. That's the thing you don't realize. Don't As know. a human, to kill these animals, you're gonna use your teeth, dude. Let's because be honest, when you're naked, what weapon do you have? Yeah, you're gonna hold it down and try uh, to bite it with your little primate pussy mouth that has no like. But if I knew it's gonna kill me, so I guess know? I guess it's a it's even for all of us. I guess mind pump uh, could only beat a small kitten. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a, I don't see a, <laughs> by the way, Boy, like a I bunch will of take pussies. a dog. Yeah. By the way, trivia question, what animal is responsible for the most uh, deaths of human deaths in Africa? Human deaths in what Africa? What animal kills Mosquitoes. more humans? No, but animal, not an insect. Uh, what animal kills more humans than any other animal in Africa? Ooh. Think of all like a, you have elephants. Hippopotamus. Have hippo. By Boom. far. Yeah, yeah, Boom. Yeah, they're By nasty. far. Boom. They are fucking super boots. aggressive. Dude, I watched a video of a hippo. I just nat I, I just nat geo you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nat geo knowledge <laughs> coming back. To Boom. Play effect. <laughs> Is that that's for Mark Farrell right there? Yeah, Hashtag yeah, yeah. Nat Geo, motherfucker. Nat geo. Dude, I just watched a video of a hippo like beating the crap out of like it was being attacked by lions, dude. Yeah. By lots I've of lions. I watched the same one, and it was beating. It was like, there's like, like, like crocodile. It was like 15 of them, and they so they in order to kill, Bro, they killed one of them. They yeah. do kill hippos, right? But it takes like like literally 10 to 15 lions, and they're not always successful. No, yeah, yeah. no hippo. They, will cor- kill they you. corner them at nighttime. Oh, he's yeah, crazy, actually, right? They're mean motherfuckers. All right, well, um, check this out. Go to YouTube, look up Mind Pump TV. There's a new video every single day. It is a library of exercises and information. Library. And it's absolutely for free. Yeah. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, you go to Instagram, look up Mind Pump Media, ask a question underneath our Q&A meme. And if we like it, we'll ask it uh, on this episode. Also, we have personal Instagram pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal, Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.